DHC1 de Havilland Chipmunk Whiskey Popper 925 was made at Hatfield in 1952 and joined the RAF in January 1953. In 1962 she was transferred to the Leeds University Air Squadron at RAF Dishforth and then later in 1966 she was transferred to the Army Air Corps at Middle Wallop and used as a trainer until 1997. After being auctioned off for civilian use, she became Golf Bravo X-Ray Hotel Alpha, and after several different owners, she is now part of the historic collection of shipping and airlines at Biggin' Hill. With the aircraft chocked, the walk around begins with a cockpit check. The hood is open by twisting the handle and carefully sliding back the canopy all the way holding onto it. The rear magnetos are checked off and guarded. The front magnetos and the electric starter switch are off. The brake released and set to fully on. The electric switch is set to ground. The throttle has full and free movement. The fuel lever is checked off and on. The flap lever is checked for correct position and locking. Full, free and correct movement of the control column is checked. The elevator is raised, making a visual check of the trimmer possible. The rear storage area is checked for loose articles and overloading. The breakable locking wires on the escape panel levers are unbroken. The top and bottom of the wings are in good condition, as well as the flap adjustment rods connections. The ailerons have full and free movement. The pitot head is uncovered. All inspection zips are closed. With the brakes on we can check they are set. Also tyre inflation, creep and tread condition. By gently rubbing a finger over the brake pipe any leak of fluid is easily spotted. The fuel gauge is gently tapped to check its position and then compared with a visual check of the contents itself. There is also a drain plug underneath for fuel contamination check. The tank vents are checked clear and unblocked. The oil cooler vent is clear. Cables and pipes look OK and no excessive oil leaks. The propeller is checked for condition. The spinner screws are checked for security. The plugs look OK. The oil scraper is turned one and a quarter turns. Exhaust gaskets are checked for obvious leakage. The cables look normal. The oil level is checked and topped up if required. The starboard wing is checked as before. With the aircraft chocked the brake is released. The anti-spin strakes and fin are checked secure. The tail wheel is checked for condition and inflation. The tail plane is in good condition. The elevators have full and free movement. The tail cover is secure. With the brakes off, full and free movement of the rudder is checked. The battery cover is secure. Once complete, reapply the brake to stop the rudder from movement in the wind. The A check complete, we can now go flying. The cockpit is quite compact and buckling up the five point harness can take a while. The main instruments are typical of the period. 
Note that the RPM and altimeter have the same design face. Make sure the charging failure light is uncovered. Hidden underneath the instrument panel is the cutoff lever. The electric starter button is on the right hand side. The flap lever has two positions in the air. Stage 1 is easy to move. Stage 2 is heavier. Make sure the handle has clicked into the ident. Releasing the flaps on a go around needs thought and be prepared for the air load. Hotel Alpha has two carb air positions, unfiltered and alternate filtered air. The forward position for takeoff and landing, the back position for taxiing and cruising. Sucking air, touches off, brakes on. The engine is primed using the wobble pump and pulled through four blades. Okay. Main electric switch to flight. Brakes checked fully on. Throttle set. Starter motor power switch on. Front magnetos on. Clear prop! Once running, switch off the starter motor power switch. Set the brakes to three notches on. Hotel Alpha has good disc brakes, so check each one. They are fully differential and make taxing very easy. Weaving is still required to see straight ahead. You may find the need to adjust the brakes while taxing to slow up. Standard run-ups include all T's and P's and 1700 RPM. This demonstration goes to 1500 RPM to keep the gauge visible on camera. With the carb hair in alternate, you will notice a rise in RPM when switched to unfiltered. Taxiing onto the runway, you may have adjusted the brakes. As a final check, release and set three notches. You're all set? Yes, fine. Going. You go wind to the Three hundred feet release the brakes, giving you full rudder deflection. Once established, straight and level, change to alternate air. In flight, the Chipmunk is a delight to fly. She's very stable with well harmonized and light controls. Conversion to type includes straight and level, climbing, descending, slow flying, and steep turns, all achievable with little fuss.
approaching a stall, there is a strong buffet felt through the airframe well before the G-brake itself, which is very benign. A powered on stall can cause a slight wing drop that is easily caught with rudder. In the circuit downwind at Rochester Airport, standard checks are done, including setting the brake three notches on. Below 93 knots, stage one flap applied. Below 71 knots, stage two flaps applied. Approach at 60 knots and move car bear to unfiltered. The wind is variable, 0 to 0, 0 5, 0, 10 to 12 knots. The wide track undercarriage and good brakes help keep us straight in a crosswind. After landing checks, flaps up, car bear to filtered. Refueled with a bacon sandwich and tea, we head off back to Biggin Hill. Brakes. One, two, three. Rolling golf at all. Chipmunk Golf Bravo X-Ray Hotel Alpha, part of the Shipping and Airlines Historic Collection.